In a recent video, I talked about the German government's plans to introduce a three month, nine euro per month public transport ticket. And that video generated a few comments that I expected and quite a lot of comments that I didn't expect. A few points and questions were raised by several people, so I thought I would make a second video to respond to some of them. So without further ado, let's dive in. A very popular question was, where exactly is this ticket going to be valid? Will you be able to use it only in your own city or in the whole state or in the entire country? Well, the important point here is that it's not a new ticket. It's a new price for existing tickets. Tariff associations will issue the tickets as normal, but just only charge nine euros for them. So whatever monthly ticket you can get now, it'll be exactly the same ticket, just cheaper. For example, I'm in an area covered by the VAB Tariff Association. You can buy a one-off monthly ticket for 200 euros approximately, which covers the entire VAB area. Well, for a period of three months, that ticket will only cost you nine euros. A lot of people in this area commute to Hanau or Frankfurt, but those cities are in a different tariff association, the RMV. Luckily, the RMV and the VAB have an agreement that allows for transitional tickets. At the moment, you can get a monthly ticket from here to Frankfurt that costs roughly 300 euros. And again, for a period of three months, that ticket will only cost you nine euros. And it's that simple. It's just a discount on existing tickets. Related to that, Will this ticket be valid on intercity express trains? And the answer to that question is no, unfortunately not. The same explanation basically applies. It's not a new ticket, it's a discount on existing tickets. We're only talking about local public transport, not long distance travel. Tickets issued by tariff associations are generally available for buses, trams, U-Bahn and S-Bahn, and in most areas also local commuter trains. So that means any train with a number beginning with RB, RE, or in some areas, IRE. Remember, whatever the ticket is usually good for in your area, that's what the nine euro ticket will be good for. Moving on, a very interesting question is this. Suppose you've paid for your ticket in advance or you're paying for it on a subscription model. Do you still get to benefit from this rule? It's an excellent question, one that newspapers were asking as soon as the idea was first announced. And the good news is, yes, you will benefit. So I have a monthly ticket on a subscription basis. Every month about 86 euros is deducted from my bank account. And yes, that is less than half the price of the one-off monthly ticket. It absolutely is worth it. It has been confirmed that in such cases, either you will simply only be charged nine euros for those three months, or you will be reimbursed. And yes, that is going to be a big headache for the tariff associations, which is another reason that they were slightly annoyed by the sudden announcement. Several of you said that Bavarians shouldn't complain about subsidizing through taxes, something that they can't take advantage of themselves. After all, uh, people living in urban areas, even if they don't have a car and use public transport all the time, are still subsidizing roads in rural Bavaria. First, let me point out that it wasn't Bavarians complaining about this, but the Bavarian government. Whether the government's views accurately represent those of the general population, I really can't say. But the general point that we all have to subsidize things we might not actually use is perfectly valid and one that I agree with. After all, I pay my health insurance premiums every month, but I've never actually had to stay in a hospital, meaning that I, a relatively healthy person, am subsidizing sick people. But I understand that this is how all forms of insurance work, and I understand why it's necessary. So of course, I completely understand and agree with that point. I was just reporting what the Bavarian state government said. A couple of you suggested that we simply do away with all public transport subsidies. Services that make a profit can continue, and those that make a loss should be discontinued. 
Yeah, well, we did that in the UK. Back in the 1960s, the government, which at the time owned the nationalised railways, closed down most of the loss-making branch lines. What the government failed to take into account, though, was that these branch lines were feeding passengers to the main lines, and that's what was making the main lines profitable. When those passengers no longer had a rail service, they bought cars. And they didn't drive to the nearest mainline station, park there, and then take a train. They just drove all the way. This meant that mainline services got fewer passengers and so less income from ticket sales. Closing the branch lines did nothing to improve the financial situation of the railways, which then went into decline. And because of this, there were more cars on the roads, and this meant more congestion, which in turn meant that the government had to spend more public money building more roads. In short, this was a massive and very expensive mistake, and one that we probably shouldn't repeat. Anyway, this video is now even longer than the original video, so I should probably stop talking now. Thanks for watching, I hope it was helpful. I'm off now to think about what I can do with the 230 euros that I've calculated I'm going to gain from this.